Shevsky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. Every week, I have a different special guest come on and give us a, a wonderful tour of their imaginary fantasy house. It's like Rick and Morty designing a, designing a house, you know? It's like they just come up with whatever their imagination can come up with. And we get to go along for the ride, and I love it. I have so much fun, and our guests have a blast. And I hope you listeners have a blast. I really appreciate it, guys. We're up to 44 reviews. Pretty stoked on that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty stoked. In the words of Larry David, I quoted him when I met him last week and said, Hey, what do you think about Fantasy House? He said, It's pretty, 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 pretty good. That's right. That's true. That's that's truth. Just like when I tell you that I'm the only realtor in Southern California. That's who the show is brought to you by me, John Shevsky, the only realtor in Southern California. <laughs> I'm saying this as I sit, ne- sit next to another Southern California realtor. <laughs> Dude, uh, if you're thinking about buying houses, if you're thinking about selling houses, if you're wondering about investments, you want to know about multifamily, any of that good stuff, go ahead and go on Instagram, go to the Fantasy House Podcast Instagram, or go to my Instagram, J O N S H E F S K Y. Why not? That's what I always say. Send me a message. You can, I think there's a call button on that. You can just call me directly. Either way, I'd love to be of service. I'd love to work with you. This episode's great. I'm really stoked. My buddy Scott Cunningham is here, and we, uh, we, we, we had a blast. We recorded an episode together, and he took me through his mind, and it is a good time. Folks, let's get this, uh, this puppy started. In the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. What you think of? My name is Scott Cunningham, and I am a residential real estate agent in Anaheim, California, as well as a real estate investor, particularly in the multifamily asset class. Uh, I know John through uh, multifamily meetups. He is the best and only realtor in Southern California <laughs> besides me. Oh, dude. It's, a, it's me. It's, it's, I, I want to, I what do you call it? A spar. I'm getting other realtors to spar with me. Oh, yeah? You're the only realtor? Well, <laughs> I, know, I know there's an apocalypse, but once you hear about my fantasy house, you'll know that why I survived the apocalypse, and I'm also a realtor in Southern California. Oh, yeah. Keep the mic close to your mouth like that, too. Yeah. Is yeah, that better? Yeah. Like you're doing stand-up. <laughs> like you're about to kiss that big old black microphone. Uh, I'm going to catch one of your previous guests' mouth sores. Oh, no, no. I guess they're all screened. <laughs> you, that's you, what that swab was for. That's right. I was gonna say you went to my doctor. You yeah. went to my GP. <laughs> uh, I was wondering why he wanted me to cough. <laughs> oh man! So I am uh, married. Been married for five years, and we've been together for ten. What does that say about your relationship? It took half the time to get married. <sighs> Just joking. <laughs> A lot of people say that actually. I yeah. didn't get my wife and I didn't get married for like I think seven or eight years until we was after. Yeah, you know, it's just the time wasn't right. Yeah. I was working hard building a business and. Uh, she was going to school and I don't know, just things worked out that way. It's perfect. It's a lease to own uh, a relationship. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you don't yeah. just want to buy it outright all the time, yeah. folks. Well, the truth is I've known her since seventh grade. You knew your wife since you guys were in junior high together? <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, but we, we were just friends throughout high school. Like We had the same group of friends, which has been really cool because whenever we talk about so-and-so or so-and-so from... High school, we're talking about the same people. You have that bond of like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that goes so far back. Yeah, but we didn't get together to be clear until I was studying for some test at Starbucks, and she worked at Starbucks, and, and then I hit her up on AIM <laughs> yeah. for the younger crowd. Um, that AIM. was the way we. That uh, was yeah, that was the old messenger, the old DM from the days of yore. So you hit her up. What'd you say? You're like, you know, that I guy said, that studying. You like yeah. to study? Yeah, I was like, hey, Ashley, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm. I rented uh, the 1989 Batman. I had never seen that. And I was like, oh, you better come over. We got a I mean, blockbuster. It's due back tomorrow. You I, a blockbuster and chill. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> I swear to God, I invented blockbuster and chill. <laughs> do you want to go to the movies tonight and get dinner? Or do you think it'd be better if we just like rented a movie and stayed home? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Baby. But depending on the answer, you knew how that night was going to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you want to go out to a very public movie? Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Then that means we're going to the cheaper restaurant. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just kidding. So okay, so you guys, you guys met in high school, and then what did you guys do? What did you do for? What do you do for fun? Oh man, um, we have a dog. 
I love taking our dog out for long walks. She's um, so cute and fluffy. She's a big, is she like a husky wolfie? Yes, Siberian husky. We haven't done a DNA test. My wife swears she's part Malamute because she's so big. She's so pretty. But thank you. She's very pretty. And uh, I, I love to cook. I uh, love to travel. Um, now, cook is a different term. If you've, if you've seen Breaking Bad, when people say they like to cook these okay. days, <laughs> I, I like to cook. He's got a Winnebago. Yes, Scott's in his underwear right now. As yeah. we do this. he's got a gas mask on and he's in his underwear. What do you cook? Uh, um, I love to to cook anything. Um, YouTube makes cooking so accessible. So if I feel like baking some of the most insane cinnamon rolls you've ever had. There's a YouTube video for that. Dude, it's crazy that you you didn't bake cinnamon rolls for this episode of Fantasy House. What the hell's the matter with uh, you? Oh, <laughs> you know what? I was thinking, what can I get John before he gets here? And I, I can, came up empty handed. I should have made cinnamon rolls. Dude, ha- handmade food makes me so happy. I mean, handmade oh. anything makes me happy, but handmade food. Let's see. I got a I got a sous vide last year, and I don't know if you've ever used one, but it is just it's incredible. I had a turkey sandwich in the bath once. Does that count? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of. What does it do? You, it's like you, you, you've got these fancy Ziploc bags. You so, throw a ham in there. So I use a vacuum sealer, okay. which we got and didn't think we would ever use. And I use it all the time uh, because you can make food and throw it in the freezer and it's good like six months later. So you vacuum pack your steaks or whatever protein you want to cook. You throw in your, you know, your butter and seasoning and anything into the bag. Vacuum pack it, drop it in the water, and it cooks it to the exact perfect temperature that you, the way you like your meat. But unlike a barbecue where it overcooks sort of the outside. So it's kind of like Brown, like if you cut the steak down the middle, it'd be kind of Brown and then red and then Brown it's pink to pink, like edge to edge, perfectly cooked. Like every bite is perfect. Oh wow. And then, but it's gross, right? So it's, it's the outside's like gray whenever it's done. So you have to take a torch to it and you torch the outside. So it's nice and crispy. Like it was on the barbecue. So you have a torch like a sushi chef? Yeah, so it's a little bit bigger than that. It's called a searsall. Okay. And it's this like globe that goes on the end of a torch and it just gets like raging hot and you just kind of hover over the meat until it looks good and flip it over and hover over it. That sounds kind of fun. Is it look it's like a Star Trek way to, to cook stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's great. I'll I'll show it to you before you leave, but um Is it a big glowing metal ball that you are yeah. scared to get it near yourself cuz you'll Yeah, I tried it with just without the, that attachment. Um, my friend actually bought that for me for Christmas, which was the nicest gift. Shout out. Like, you know, guys, we don't give each other gifts. My wife goes, uh, Christmas shopping for like every friend and office worker three months before the holiday season. And, uh, I've, my best friend, I've known him for 20 years. We don't get each other gifts. Yeah. Most of us don't either. You're just like, yeah, you got everything you need. Yeah. But my buddy, the internet, you're, you're lucky. Everything's fine. My buddy knew how much (laughs) I loved the sous vide thing. And it was like, he's my workout partner in the morning. Yeah. And I show up to the gym, like ready to go. And he's like, Hey, I got something for you. I was like, that is so nice. Cause it's like 75 bucks. That's awesome. Yeah. It was so nice. I almost started crying. It was so so thoughtful. You could have used the tears in the, in the mix to cook your food. Yeah. So sous vide. Um, I like to work out. Uh, I'm not in the best shape, but I'm super strong. <laughs> um, strong man. I'm, I'm strong, but I'm not fit. It's just a function of my eating habits. But what's your favorite workout? What do you do? Deadlifts? <sighs> no, no, no. Um, uh, my favorite workout. I think um, I really enjoy chest day. I think every man could say that. It's do you bench? Is that what it is? Yeah, like bench press. Uh, um, you know, dumbbells. We keep it, we keep it simple. I always get hurt whenever I use dumbbells. So I'm I've, like, I pulled my back twice using dumbbells. So I just, I see them and I'm like, I'm just like, Nope. Yeah. Not getting me today. You dumbbells. You dumb- <laughs> You're the only dummy here is you, you dumbbells. I'm not falling for it. I hurt my back last year actually. And I'm not sure what it was from, but it was from the gym. Dumbbells. Just Pro- it probably might've been, I think it might've been when I was doing shoulder presses and I, I literally couldn't walk. I had to go to a chiropractor and I, I don't believe in chiropractic really. I'm sorry, chiropractors, <laughs> but, um, got a lot of chiropractic listeners on this show. Well, here's the thing though. I, I don't believe it. Fantasy that, spine. I don't think it's going to like help me sleep or like treat my acid reflux, like all that other stuff that they say. Yeah. But I couldn't walk. Like I was limping into this place and he cracked the hell out of my back. Like something was loose <laughs> and I was like, not a hundred percent better, but I could walk, which was, I mean, it was, it was, God, it was God sent. So, so you're better now and you're never using dumbbells again. Neither <laughs> am I. And neither are any listeners if you know it's good for you. Um, regular, let's see. What else? Um, I love uh, going. I love the outdoors. I love camping. Uh, I go camping every year up to Mammoth. Uh, the same weekend every oh. year since 1989. And Summertime camping or snow camping? Summertime. Okay. I've 
my tent is rated for snow camping, so I kind of want to try it out. You got to. Yeah, I've never done it. I think I would enjoy it. I've done below freezing camping. I don't think I've done any deep snow camping. I remember when I lived up in Mammoth for a bit. You did? And yeah, and there were some snow bums, some, some cool skier, snowboarder mm-hmm. dudes that came into town from Oregon, and they just set up a tent like next to my buddy's. My buddy had a trailer house, and they, they set up a tent next to in the deep snow wow. and camped out there. And I was like, wow, these guys are so cool. Wow. I was in a, like a heated apartment, and I was just like, those guys are so cool. Yeah, like that's, that's roughing it. Yeah. I did learn that I enjoy sleeping in like a big, comfortable down blanket that we use on our bed. Yeah, when I'm camping instead of a sleeping bag. Like, why well, confine yourself to a sleeping bag? Like, if you can just bring this like overstuffed, ridiculous comforter. And I went, I went camping with my buddy Slayton once, and he brought an air mattress and a bunch of blankets. And I was like, "What? This isn't camping." Yeah. I slept so nice so that nice. night, and yeah. I was like, "Wait a second, I've been doing it all wrong." All wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless you're backpacking, you have to have a. You know. Yeah, but if you're car camping, you can easily just have a blow-up mattress and stop yeah. trying to act like you're such a camper. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I, 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 was like, I, should I brought six feathered pillows. I, I was like, I don't even need the... I'll, I'll just kind of throw my body weight under these Dude, feathered dream. And, we need to go camping. Yeah. I, I want to go camping with you. This is great. This is. I'm, I feel some growth coming here. I'm, oh. I'm, getting, a, I'm getting a mattress. Oh, we brought a, we brought a flat top grill this year. Yeah. Flat top, like hibachi style. Yeah. Instead of like a camp stove. Yeah. And it makes cooking such a pleasure because like camping's a chore. We all know it's a chore. It's a big pain in the butt. Are you talking about doing your dishes from cooking? Dishes from oh, cooking. Yeah. Everything yeah. is a chore, including dishes from cooking. And this thing, it's just like you scrape it off into a bucket and you're done. Like it's, it's the best. Yeah, there's no way. To, I, I've gone camping with crews. Like I, we've gone to a couple of bachelor parties and a couple of group camping trips. And the times that – usually when you go to the group, there's always some people that are like, we're going to make the coolest breakfast, which, by the way, is like scrambled eggs and hash browns and stuff that you're like, yeah, that's just breakfast. There's nothing that special about yeah. it. And now we have fucking six hours of dishes to do, you pieces of shit. If <laughs> yeah. I was in charge, we would just have carne asada and some tortillas. No yeah. one would have to clean anything up. Yeah, we're going to pre-make it, pull it out of the Ziploc, heat it up, and eat it. Yeah. 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 Oh, dude. I, I, I literally – like when I go camping up in uh, like uh, Joshua Tree or uh, that area, mm-hmm. I will grab carne asada. I'll grab tortillas. I'll throw it down on the grill. You cook it. The tortilla is the plate mm-hmm. for the carne asada, and you get to eat it. Yep. I have one knife, a regular, like, nice, like, one-piece yep. knife, that you, like a survival knife. Yep. Cut it up if you need to. That, that, and that's it. That's and, it. And no dishes. Go to sleep. Go hiking. Go do anything you want. You do not have to do dishes. I know this to be true by mistake because we went camping, like, in 2008 or 2009, Rachel and I... Right after the Great Recession. Right after. Or during Everyone the, went camping then. It was the thick of it. <laughs> Actually, camping's a rich man's sport. It, it really it, is if you start it, to... Oh, my God. If you buy your tent at REI, it is. <laughs> yes. It, <laughs> no, no, no offense, REI. No, seriously. Like We could have gone on a nice like five-night cruise for the amount of money Like when you add it all up, gas to get there, and food, and you end up spending like $200 more on food than you thought you needed, and all the gear. Well, that's and, all there is to do is eat. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I digress. But we arrived in the other car that was coming up not until the next day we didn't think about it but they had all the kitchen stuff so we brought all these groceries down the mountain and we set up camp and it's just my wife and i we weren't married at the time and we're like well we've got to make dinner but we didn't bring anything <laughs> like we didn't think about that so uh, we made our entire meal uh we had like rice uh corn on the cob steak and um i think that's it and we made the rice i used the salsa jar and boiled the water yeah. and the rice over the thing. We had no dishes. And to the utensils, I took my knife and I whittled chopsticks for the both of us. Like, yeah. It's perfect. It's, and it's the best, right? Yeah, it was the Less best. homework. I don't, it's like I, I just left civilization because there's too much homework and too many chores. And then I get out here and everyone's like, surprise, homework and chores. I'm like, no, I, what? Yes. Just cook it up real quick. Be done with it. What else do you do? Uh, what else do I do? When, when, you're, when you're off camping. Right. Oh, uh, well, we hike. I used to get really ambitious on the hiking. And as of I got gotten older, even though I'm not that old, I'm 33. Um, I, I don't know. I just haven't been in like peak physical fitness the past couple of trips and haven't really wanted to go on like brutal switchback hikes up the mountain to, you know, nine mile away places. But we, we go on some hikes and we go fishing. Um, oh, love yeah. to fish, uh, sit in the hot springs. I love the hot springs. In so Mammoth. great. Dude, Sit in hot springs. Did you ever go up there? Was it ever still snowy when you were in the hot springs? Um, I did hike to the hot springs once after it had just snowed in yeah. February. And we got there and it was like we were knee deep in snow and we're like, forget this. Oh, you didn't do? Oh, dude. And my feet were frozen. Like we just turned around and walked back to the I car. freaking love it. There's something about letting your genitals get exposed to either <laughs> insane freezing temperatures or insane like, like, this, you know, like being naked outside in the sun. That it, they don't get exposed a lot. 
<laughs> yeah. As a man, like you're just like your your penis and balls are constantly like covered up. Well, you know, there, you've heard about the new uh, sun tanning thing. Or, no, no. Tell us. Tell tell me and the listeners. Oh my god! So uh, you can Google it. I God, I can't think of the name of it. It's like sun shining or sun. It's where you. It's where you, on my boner makes me happy. It's where you lay outside, John Denver, with your Dong Denver, with your and everything exposed, so that your bee hole gets its oh, dose of sun. Your tochus gets sunning. Yes, I can't think of the name. It has some funny name. There's a hashtag for it. But I saw it pop up on my Instagram feed. I'm like, this is wait. Ridiculous. As a guy, I have to spread my cheeks. In the yes, sun? and so there's like this yoga chick that posts about it, and I was like, that's ridiculous. But sure enough, like a couple of days later, Josh Brolin posts the actor. Yeah. Oh, I know who Goonies. he is. Um, Top to bottom, I know who he is. Yeah. Josh Brolin. His, po- posts his that butthole he, looks like a, that the, the stayed, chin of that he, character. His that family liked. went out to, yeah, his family went out to dinner and he had to stay home because he burned his butthole. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know if he was joking or if he literally was taking the advice seriously, but apparently has some health benefits. Is someone saying this? Oh, they're saying that getting some vitamin D around your booty is good for colon cancer or something I've, like that? I have something. But then in a few more weeks, isn't there going to be like a study that's going to be like, uh, like uh, buttholes that are exposed to sun are that much more likely to get skin cancers? Or, oh, of course. Right? Yep. You can't win. My poor little butthole just wants to see the sun, though. Yeah. So I just got to let him out of his cage. Yeah. 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 In a weird yoga pose. Okay. So. <laughs> the brown chakra. <laughs> no one ever talks about the brown chakra. Oh, that's the most important one. Doing, 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 uh, doing, doing. It's aligned. I'll tell you that much. Oh, man. So when I'm not working, I'm usually watching TV with my wife trying to avoid doing anything um nothing wrong with that no, i'm just kidding no we we go out a lot with friends and stuff but um nothing too crazy you know dinners and and you know we keep it light you keep it light yeah we 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 do our annual like vegas trip like somebody for some reason will coax us to go to vegas at least once a, once or twice a year uh what do you do when you're in vegas uh, you go to shows you have a dean martin weekend or what no oh, no we did Celine Dion once, but I fell asleep. But it wasn't my fault. It wasn't because I was bored. It was like she's playing The Heart Will Go On, and it's just so relaxing. It's I a just, great song. I love that I song. I just was sitting there snoring. But uh, At the show? At the live yeah, show? Yeah, I was oh, literally yeah. like... <clears throat> my wife was elbowing me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Honey. I, know we, I, I like to play craps. Um, craps is fun. Yeah, it's so fun. I like to play craps. If uh, things are going good, then I'll play craps for a few days. <laughs> things are going bad, uh, they go bad in the first couple hours. The so. key is to only bet ten to fifteen dollars total on craps. Yeah, and then walk away. Yeah, if you lose it. I turned forty into twenty four hundred one time. Really? Yes, and it was a, and it was a fluke. Like I hadn't even checked into my room yet. I was meeting my cousin, and I was just spending the weekend there. And- How did the rest of the weekend go after that? Oh, it was gone that night. You spent it all that night? Oh, man. I would have been like, let's get in the car. Let's go to the bike shop right now. I want to buy a bicycle. Dude, I I wish they had an Apple store. At the time, I really needed a new MacBook. (laughs) You could have got a new laptop. Dude, I could have bought a new laptop. (laughs) You could have invested it. I could have invested it. You could have thrown it at a, at, a good, at a good investment. I don't want to do the math on it because it'll just be depressing. That what you could... I mean, I, mean, I was like, oh, like bucks, I was in such a insane. good mood. I hadn't eaten anything and they're feeding you drinks. And before you know it, I'm over here like, let's learn pie go. <laughs> Bad call, buddy. Yeah. It's like the dumbbells. Just yeah. say no. But why, did, why did I lose? I don't, what are we doing here? I don't know what to do in Vegas. Like, I, I've gone for a couple of bachelor parties lately. I've gone... I, my wife and I might have went. It's like, I don't... I don't know. I'm not, like, I'm not a huge gambler. I do like the smell of the casinos. Me too. Like it, the cigarettes and the yep. oxygen. Like I like the smells. Yep. Like if you're drunk walking around in Vegas, it's just fun to people watch and walk around. Oh yeah. And there's a couple decent restaurants. I'm not going to say there's not, but I end up just like I'm like when you're in Nevada, there's so much beautiful desert. I'm like I want to go hike in those those rocky hills over there. What am I doing over here in this fake pirate area or underneath yeah. this little? Eiffel Tower. Suddenly, money loses all value. You're like, oh, here's ten bucks for valet, and here's five bucks. And you're just oh yeah, handing out money like it's like suddenly you forgot how hard you worked for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dude, it's like Brentwood with slot machines. You're just like, oh, you have to be rich here to get around. Yeah. Come on, I just need to. Yeah, I did win ten thousand dollars on the slot machine the day that I proposed to my wife. Shit, dog, you got good luck. I did. It was super lucky. Did I, you buy that MacBook we were talking about earlier? No, no, this was this was uh, 2013. Okay. And, I staged this whole elaborate uh, proposal. She had no idea I was in Vegas. Part of the proposal was to get her to Vegas without her knowing that I was there. And I was successful. But while I was waiting for her and her friend to arrive, I was playing some slots. And I hit a $10,000 jackpot. They paid me out in cash. 
before you proposed her? Yeah, like that 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 night. You must have had the, like the best, most exciting proposal. If, even if she says no, dog, yeah. ten G is my insurance uh, policy. <laughs> oh, that's so great! I, I, and then when she said yes, we went right to dinner. And then I was like, we sat down to dinner, and I was like, by the way, <laughs> I have something to tell you. She's she's like she, she just looks at you. And you're like, wouldn't you want to marry a man that just it just made ten G's? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. What'd you do with that money? Oh, what did I do with that money? I just went back into the bank account. I just spent, well, a lot on a ring. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's pay off that ring, baby. Well, I'm glad you won that cash. Uh, let's go to Vegas after we're done recording this episode since you've got such good luck there. Yeah. I, Where's the ge- uh, geographic location of your fantasy house? We're flying a drone over. What are we looking okay, at? Okay, we're looking at, I, I haven't fully decided it could be on the island of Manhattan, or somewhere in the country on the coast in Connecticut. The tropical island of Manhattan. Yes. Or Kenneth Kenneth from Connecticut's land. Yeah, so if it was in Manhattan, it would have to be, uh, I didn't look at a map, but it would have to be on the water, maybe buy up a big chunk of commercial property like a warehouse and demolish it and turn it into a compound of my own. A compound of your own? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's the geographic location. But if, if not there, then... Actually, you got to pick one though. Scratch that. Then the country, because there's a couple of items on my list that wouldn't work in Manhattan. It needs so. to be on the country. Okay. It would have to be like not in the country. I, I don't know Connecticut super well. I just know that that's. I would like to be close to New York. So, okay. um, yeah. So on the coast, in a nice property overlooking the ocean. So if we're looking down on what you've built there, what do I? What do we okay, see? Okay, so you see like a. Uh, Style of the house isn't super important to me. Um, before we started recording, I was telling you about Toll Brothers. Mm-hmm. So like a really nice, you know, four, uh, like it appears to be anyway, a really nice, you know, three to 5,000 square foot house. Just you know? so our listeners know, Toll Brothers, they're, they're, they're a, builder. a builder. They, they, yeah. they make homes. Uh, yeah. So like new modern builds. Yeah. If you go into a Toll Brothers house in the past 20 years, you'll know what I'm talking about. But basically just a, a nice... Uh, I don't want to say track home, slightly custom, but just a nice home. You know, it could be Mediterranean, could be um, traditional. The style, it's not super important to me. Okay. Well, then I'll pick it. It's Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Cool. Okay. And then uh, it's going to have, if you're in the drone overlooking the, the property, it's going to have a landing strip for an airplane. And uh, you're not going to see any airplane hangers, though, just a landing strip. Uh, you're you're going to see a uh, a workshop, so like a garage. That's going to be probably about 7,000 square feet, 8,000 nice. square feet. Nice, big, huge. Um, no, we'll say 10,000 10, square foot warehouse workshop. I was say, yeah, spoil yourself, guy. It's fantasy. Yeah, yeah, you can have it as big as you want. Yeah, 10,000 square foot. <laughs> okay, cool. It's going to need to be that big because of what I want inside of that work, uh, What's workshop. What's inside that workshop? Inside the workshop is going to have state-of-the-art tools from uh, modern electronics to robotics to uh, manufacturing with uh, metal 3D printing, anything you could possibly need or want so that when I get a squirrely, funny invention idea in the middle of the night as I'm about to fall asleep, I can call up all of my top engineers and friends that I've since recruited to be on call so they can go down and play with me (laughs) and we can build neat, fun toys. We've got a fun little Elon Musk sense to you there. For oh, sure. I, 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 I my wanna, council of geniuses will figure it out. Yeah, I want a hybrid go-kart that I can fill up with gas, but it's got an electric motor, so it goes super fast, but I don't have to recharge it. Fun stuff like that. Consider it done. Yeah, we'll have it by Friday. So that's going to be the workshop. That's great. Mm-hmm. Where else do you want to take it? Well, let's go through the front door. Okay. So we, that's kind of a treat. We got to go to the workshop first. Now let's okay. say we leave the workshop okay. and go to the front. Can you go to the front door. Yeah. Um, so back to the Toll Brothers thing. Uh, what you don't know about the house is even though it looks like a totally normal house, super impressive, beautiful entryway. Not It doesn't have to be like a ballroom big. Just, you know, when someone walks in, they go, dang, this is a nice house. So well-decorated, modern amenities. Not necessarily modern in style, but just, you know... Um, uh, I wanted to. The reason why I, my fantasy house isn't this, uh, the main living area isn't this giant, you know, ballroom oversized thing is that I, I've, I've been in houses like that and I don't get that cozy I'm at home feeling. Mm-hmm. And I want to feel like I'm at home at my house. So um, you walk in, uh, maybe you have like a nice office or den to the right. Um, you have your um, maybe foyer with with a, uh, either a dual staircase or a single staircase up to like a landing that that's, um, you know, maybe, uh, 
uh, hangout area to read, that kind of thing. And then you're going to have some bedrooms upstairs. Does anyone ever read in those landings? I'm not sure. I don't know. If, I, I love them. I love the way they feel. I like multiple like layers in a house to yeah. where it's not just like upstairs and downstairs or one. Yeah. I like a landing, yeah. but I'm always like, does anyone ever sit there? In that reading nook? Yeah. yeah. The window seat? Does any, I don't know. Um, I read if it, if it was a comfortable seat, like, yeah. you know, I, I hand selected the furniture and this is super comfortable. Then yeah, I think I would read there. Like if I was there with the fantasy house crew right now and they were filming it uh-huh. and my producer said, it's okay. I'd probably look at my producer and be like, is this okay? Can I sit there real quick? I would want a shot of me like just reading real quick on your landing. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I like how you said that. Sure. (laughs) Someone does read at the landing. You, right now. Next. So (laughs) what you don't know about this house though, and I'm not one of these. kill you. No, I'm not one. I'm not a weird like doomsday prepper. Good. But you don't, (laughs) but you don't know about like, you don't know that you, you can't see your airbags in your car, but your car has airbags, right? Yeah. So, what you don't know about this house is it's a fully self-contained bunker. It's not underground, but like the windows are bulletproof. I could hit a button and all the windows are going to have a steel door closed, like end of days type, like fully self-contained house. But you don't know it. You, when you come over, you're not thinking I'm in some weirdos, like crazy doomsday den or something. But you are. But you are. In some weirdos. Yeah. Crazy doom- <laughs> so, you know, if there's a major natural disaster, yeah. some sort of terrorist attack, I mean... We're not that far off from, I, I, I come from in the energy uh, background. I yeah. Come from the energy sector. Is the energy sector, uh, a petroleum company. Uh, you're, we're not that far off from like living like it's 1900 because it wouldn't take much to stop the supply of fuel to a major metropolitan uh, area. Are you trying to make me scared right now? No, no, not at all. I'm just saying it would be nice that if there's something happened that you be good my friends families and, and, and loved ones are all would be safe it'll all be safe you know would be would be chill for the foreseeable future so that's that's a feature of my house <laughs> uh so it's going to be solar powered of course okay um or whatever self-contained you know it's fully self-contained off the grid like able to, to handle its own shit without asking for, sure, for anything for sure which i think is always cool yeah like well it's gonna have well water you know oh, yeah. uh, all that good stuff well we got some um, water even it will even have its own cell tower and I'm going to go to the sec and get my own bandwidth so that only, um, I can use that cellular band so that my friends and family members could all have like a cheap flip phone in their car. And if there was a major emergency, we could all communicate with each other. And you don't have to worry about other people's towers being down. You got right. Yours. Cause what happens is that like we had a small earthquake, um, in your Belinda and I mills area. One yeah. Time. And within minutes, we all, I was at work, we all pull out our cell phones to call, see. And nobody could get through to anybody? No. All the lines were down. And it was like, I don't know, 5.5. I don't know what it was. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't anything crazy. It was enough to like knock all the crap off the shelves at the grocery store, but like, you know, the freeways didn't explode. Yeah. <laughs> and the cell, and cell, still people cell couldn't, could, did not work. They always talk about that. I mean, now that we're all on the doomsday uh, topic, like the, I've had so many people, I've had a friend that moved out of California that was like, Man, if something goes down in LA, You're right. you guys aren't going to be able to get anywhere. The freeways are going to be there. I was yeah. just like, okay, dude, just, 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 just chill out with these dark thoughts, please. You're scared yeah. the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's it's true though that like yeah, yeah the, a little earthquake, someone farted and no one could make a phone call. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> someone it's farted and the, the towers were overcrowded. Um, hidden. This this isn't related to the doomsday thing. This is more related to thank God. Uh, am I right, listeners? <laughs> it's got all Mad Max. So uh, I'd like a, a hidden gun room. Yeah, what just, are you gonna do so in like, there? You know, for safety and security, so kids can't get into them. But it would just be like fantasy style, like James Bond or. Um, you know, like in the movies where they go down, like where they're about to go on a mission and they have like one of those rooms yeah. with all the lights and all the... They kid up with all their cool yeah, stuff. So oh, yeah. So I want all I want all that cool stuff just for fun. That's great. Then um, it's going to be located on a cliff overlooking the ocean, I think I mentioned. I'm afraid of uh, doomsdays, but uh, natural science and erosion? Nope. I'm just going to look it straight in the eye and just laugh. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it, I, it's going to have, you know, access via plane so we can fly wherever we want, whenever we want. There's no airplane hangars because the planes are going to pull up to an elevator like you see on an aircraft carrier. It's going to bring the plane down below oh, ground. Man. That's cool. Yeah, it's going to be cool. And then same thing with the boat. So it's on the ocean and it's going to have a boat launch. And whenever you park your boat in the dock, a gate's going to go up and this boat is going to lower down. A few floors down below the house mm. by basically pumping all of that water out of that chamber. I can't do the sound effect for water. <laughs> no, it's, no. 
<laughs> that, that might work for the water. It's going to be loud. Maybe we can have some engineers figure out how to do it without pumps. Maybe it could be like some kind of like gravity emptying, gravity filling. Kind yeah, of this thing. is fantasy house. You can make up some stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like a molecule mover. So that's going to take you into like the indoor boat dock room, which will be separated from the main room by a big piece of glass, so you can admire your sixty or seventy foot globe trotting yacht oh, whenever you want. But in that room, it maybe it will be like a multi-purpose room, bat cave style. So yes. basketball court, indoor tennis court, whatever you want to do, you can do in that room. Um, so that's going to be like the uh, maybe next to the gym. So a fully functioning gym with a full-time personal trainer. And uh, no you can go down there and you can you know jump on a trampoline, play basketball. It's just going to be like the fun room, which is way below the house. Uh, what, what would we be listening to if we're in there? Any music? Music? I I like all. I, it's so cliche, but I like all kinds of music. Um, well, what would you pick though if you're like, oh, Fantasy House is coming by today to film my episode? Oh well, probably some artist that I don't even know the name of. Uh, something popular, like oh yeah, you know that one song? That's the song you'd play. How about Despacito? <laughs> Everyone, just imagine Despacito playing right now. Um, you got a kitchen in this puppy? Oh yeah, so, I gotta go to this kitchen. So the kitchen, we're gonna have just like your gourmet, beautiful looking kitchen, but that's just for optics and for whenever I feel like cooking. There's gonna be a fully functioning commercial kitchen. Doesn't have to be huge, but you know you've seen small restaurants that crank out some amazing food. So a restaurant style kitchen with a full time chef that mm-hmm. that's not a centerpiece because those aren't pretty. It's just you know. It's in a, one of those doors that restaurant doors that go both ways. Yeah, like a commissary uh, kitchen kind of area. It's much yeah. more industrial than it is fancy looking. Definitely. Yeah. So you have your regular kitchen for you know for show, but <laughs> the real kitchen, that guy back there is Johnny the chef is cooking. So what's Johnny the chef cooking us? Since this is the, the uh, I'm going to say a cowboy ribeye. Cowboy in, ribeye in the wood fired oven. What's what's a cowboy ribeye? Is that a bigger? Cut? It's like a yeah, it's like a two inch thick cut ribeye with. You know, it's like 20 ounces and you've got like, they, they leave the bone, it's bone in. Oh yeah. But it's not tomahawk. Tomahawk is like where the, they leave the entire the whole rib, rib bone. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have the entire rib bone. It's just a little shorty. Anthem. If you get a tomahawk cut steak, is that, is the, is the meat anymore? Or is it just that you have the whole rib bone? So you're looking, it looks really cool. It just looks cool. And so that they can charge you 120 bucks. I was going to say, it's it. super expensive when you get a yeah. tomahawk, which yeah. I don't get, but I've, I've been in circles that have, and I've been like, that's a really expensive cut. Yeah. But yeah. dude, ribeye is, is my favorite. It, oh, it's the best. Chefsky here. Hey, you guys know I'm not just a fantasy real estate agent. I'm a really real real estate agent. That's right. In real life in Southern California, I am a realtor. So hit me up if you want to talk about houses, condos, multifamily apartment buildings. If you want to sell a house, buy a house, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com or on Instagram at J-O-N-S-H-E-F-S-K-Y. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Real estate. It's really fun. All right, guys. Back to the show. Okay, so now that I've made my mouth water and several of our steak listeners' uh, mouth water. Okay, so all my bedrooms are regular size. All my bedrooms are regular size. Like, you know, big, like, like think Vegas hotel room, you yeah. know, like not too big. Like, again, I want to I wanna feel like I'm at a home and cozy. And the idea of sleeping in a bed at the, in the master bedroom in this, like, 30-foot by 40-foot bedroom just doesn't seem cozy to me. It doesn't feel cozy for you. No, no, I, I want a normal size bedroom as far as, like, the master bathroom is concerned. Again, high end, gorgeous. I, I I say Vegas again, like when you stay at one of the five star, like Wynn or uh, you know a remodeled Bellagio room or something. It's it, you just feel like uh, you feel like a king for the night. Yeah. So uh, something like that, where it's just even if it's over the top, like and sparkly and shiny, and I just want it to feel like this is a luxurious bathroom and uh, lots of shower head jets. What kind of like surface uh, textures and materials are, are you marbles, there? but maybe faux marble because marble is real stains too stains easily. Stains way and... too easily. Um, I, I like heated floors. I, went, I stayed at a friend's house who had heated floors in the bathroom, and it sounds silly, but when you get out of the shower and the floor is like nice and warm, so s- nice get. and toasty, it feels so good. It really does. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Yeah. Just so you know, uh, Costco, uh, not Costco, Home Depot sells those kits, and it's not that expensive if you're to just throw the little. What is yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a coil, like copper coils, coils under, underneath it, or yeah, it's like the. I don't know what material they're made out of, but yeah, it's like a coil system, and then you lay your tile over it. 
Nothing too crazy. It might be worth it. There's probably a YouTube video on it. <laughs> There's YouTube videos on everything. I love that about yeah. YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Anything, anytime you get lost in anything, like just hit Apple T, open up a new tab, and throw a YouTube video up there. It'll, it'll walk you through anything. It, it really will. My brother just built his, his fantasy house uh, in Idaho, and he has since become a general contractor. But he is not from that industry. He's just one of those guys that can figure things out. That's like my brother. Super incredible. But, yeah. But he did it, I, I'm, I'm assuming, from a lot of YouTube videos. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, YouTube's amazing. Like, stuff that's like, I'm like, I myself, like, I'm not alpha male. I'm alpha male adja- adjacent. <laughs> and I'll be like, I guess I could do it if it doesn't hurt my arm or my knees or my back or I'll try that. Uh, you know, and I, I attempt it. But man, I'll open up YouTube. I, I made my mountain bike tires tubeless. And I just watched people on YouTube be like, all right, next step is to do this. And it's like, oh, it's like hanging out with a, a real adult. Yeah. That's just telling you what to do. And step it, by step. And then you don't feel bad if you have to ask him again, like, what did you just say? Because you just rewind it. Yeah. Yeah, just rewind it. <laughs> which, which is the best. Because I'm always the guy that goes, wait, 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 what would you say? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. YouTube's. Yeah. That's, this is a shout out. If you guys, uh, if our listeners aren't aware, YouTube is it's a website that has a lot of videos on it. Uh, lots of videos. Scott's really playing off of my... Uh, my facetious my sarcasm. <laughs> um I hate, I hate to say um so much but i've got to get get back into the house uh ooh, i want a cozy old timey den with like a fireplace in an old beat up leather couch but it's worn like a baseball glove just super comfortable mm-hmm. just like hang out in and play super mario brothers that would be awesome that's that's an idea of like a, a good leisure example for you right there. So that cu- comfy, cozy couch and Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. That sounds like a good day. Bring you back to the childhood when everyone's uncle had a den that the kids would play in with the, while the adults were talking. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I want one of those. I think of those like for holiday times. Like, what did yeah. we do during the holidays while the adults were all together? We were all playing the kids would... you know, Super Mario Brothers on Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> or yep. whatever. <laughs> it's pizza time. And yeah, you, is that what you do? You Ninja have pizza? Yeah. No, no, Ninja Turtles. It was a game. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I know Ninja Turtles. Every time you'd get a pizza, they go, "It's pizza time." And is it also pizza time though in your game chair right now? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the uh, Devil's Bread, which is pizza. The Devil's Pie. Yeah, it's so good. The tomato pies. All right, what's next? Is there anything left? Uh, yeah, yeah. I want a go kart track outside. Love that. Anything with a track outside or inside makes me happy. Or inside, I don't Just care. Having a, a go kart track. track. Yes, please. Oh, and I didn't tell you the best part about the boat cave thing. What's the best part about the boat cave thing? I'm gonna have the Goonies water slide. Oh yeah, and it's gonna go right into a big underground lake that has a pirate ship. And it's going to be amazing. Is this going to be? Is it going to be a replica of the Goonies? Yes. Oh, okay. That's that's awesome. Full replica. I freaking love the Goonies. Yeah, me too. I uh, that yeah. It's, I mean, who doesn't love that I mean, movie? Fantasy House. Why not have the Goonies water slide? Yeah, you have to. Is and, Sloth there? And, and Sloth is there. I'll get the guys from Disney to design like a animatronic Sloth. Oh, that'd be awesome. The Imagineers. Uh, what else will I have? Oh, and to open the door to the water slide, you gotta do the keys on the bone keyboard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And holy S H I T. Dynamite. Okay. So, <laughs> ooh, this is and this is probably the last thing I'll tell you, but I think it's uh, important, and I would probably do this even if I don't have my fantasy house, but my dream house one day. I would like a super luxurious um, dog kennel with the treatment center for rescue dogs. I would love to be able to host a rescue on my property and uh, take care of dogs until we can find a home for them. That's awesome. That's how we found our, I found my dog uh, at an open house. I was hosting an open house. I think I told you the story. Yeah. But and, tell the listeners it's a great okay. story. I was uh, setting up the open house signs and she was wandering across the street. And she, when she saw me, she ran across this busy street. I had to stop traffic so she wouldn't get hit. She was looking for help. Somebody had set her head on fire. So imagine a insane. Yeah. It's very sad. Heartbreaking shit. Yeah. Somebody had set her on fire. So her head was all blistered and, and burnt. And so we, I immediately called the animal control and then in a, in a, in a panic and went on a Facebook live, hundreds of people responded on Facebook live and, uh, realized quickly that I probably shouldn't hand her over to animal control because we know what they would do with her. They give them a time limit, basically. and Yeah, and, and with those kind of injuries, they probably aren't going to. Oh. So, <sighs> dodged the animal control lady and uh, posted about her online. Uh, f- 
found a animal uh, rescue, a uh, Siberian Husky rescue called Shadow Husky Rescue out of Lake Elsinore, California. He just happened to be down the street at a hospital, at a, at a vet, uh, veterinarian hospital in Anaheim. He said, bring her down. All the way from Elsinore. He just happened to be right down the yeah. street. Yeah. Wow. And so we took her over there, Mauricio and I, um, one of my colleagues. He got her um, seen by the doctor immediately, got her take, you know, patched up and medicated. They had to scrape the wound, and you, you, know, you don't want the details. But we, they needed somewhere to put her that night, and they didn't have anywhere to put her. His, his kennel was full. So my wife said, well, you can bring her over you know, to our place for just for a night. And I was like, sure. And then turned into two nights and then four nights. And then uh, after you know, a month or two, finally, somebody was wanting to adopt her. And I was like, you can't have this dog. This is my dog. This is my dog. This is my dog. So, so she's ours. She's so sweet. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, uh, it, uh, that, that's great that your fantasy house has that. And that's great that your real house has that, too. You're a good man. One day. You're a good human being. Wouldn't it be nice to be so rich that you could just play with a big pack of dogs every day. I mean, how cool that'd be. Oh, it'd be so great. And then also be rich enough to have somebody that takes care of like, you know, cleaning up the poop and feeding them. Oh day. yeah. The downside of the uh, whole thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the poop, all the hard work, all the best things in life, uh, have poop that you have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. What you is know? that about? Oh, that's... what else? Is there anything else in the fantasy house? Uh, no, I think we covered it all. I don't know. Oh. anything. Oh, we got something else. This is the last thing. What I need, is it? I, Tell need me. A, I need a couple cyber trucks. What the Tesla cyber yeah, trucks? Gonna have to have them. I'll just give you a couple uh, really weird uh, industrial, uh, you know, computer mice or whatever, and it'll be the same thing. Those things are so freaking weird looking. It is. They're weird. But you looking. like it now, huh? Yeah, it's grown on me. And the idea that it like lowers down and drives like a sports car and then raises up to be a truck, it, it really, you know, it sits right with me. I think I, I would enjoy that. I've never been a crazy about Tesla's, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tesla's design stuff. Mm-hmm. I've always, I've always been like, eh, it's an all right design. I've, uh, the interiors look amazing. But the outside, I've always been like, oh, whatever. So I wasn't that blown away when people were like, it's ugly. I was like, it's Tesla. They just, they're kind of like, they're doing their thing. Yeah. No, I've, I, I'm, the Model S and the Model 3, they, they're kind of, kind of boring. Looking. Yeah. They look like, they look like something like a, a 90s guy's like idea of futuristic, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It looks, uh, kind of, kind of reminds me of the old Ford, um, Tauruses like that rounded. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they're, they're awesome cars, cars from what I heard. Yeah. Everyone I know that has them is stoked on them and I'm sure they're great. Yeah. No, they're incredible cars. It's just, they my wife will not go and test drive the model three with me because she thinks I would never own that car. It's ugly. I'm like, well, but it's, 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 but the iPhone's not that great looking, but it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just gotta go. You gotta drive it. I drive an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at, uh, www.superagent oc.com or they can find me on facebook um uh, it's facebook.com slash scott camden cunningham oh you got the whole name you got your middle name too i think so s-c-o-t-t-c-a-m-d if they want to talk about multifamily investing uh buying apartment buildings uh for passive income then they can find me at aha multifamily.com that's aha Exactly. A H A multifamily dot com. And or they could just uh shoot me an email. I don't know if you can put that in the description or Yeah, I'll put your email in the description. Cool, yeah. That anyone email me. Send them an email. It's it's always it's easiest to give them one direct call to action. So if the one main thing you want them to do to hit you Oh yeah, just send me an email then. Just Let's send just Scott say, an email. What's yeah. your email address? Scott C dot listings at gmail.com. There you go, folks and ladies and germs and everybody guys. Thank you so much for listening. If this is your first time listening to fantasy house, I hope you feel like a hashtag blessed guest. I know, I know I do. I love the, the exercise of imagination with somebody is just like, it's just so much freaking fun. If, you're, if this is your first time listening, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Give us a five star review. If you've been a long time listener and you've already given us a review, hit the share button. Send this. Send if you're a realtor listening, send this to another realtor. If you're someone that's like, oh man, I, I, I've rescue dogs too, dude. Check this out. Send it to someone that you know that's into the rescue dog world. So you, you just just have fun with it and, and and send it off. Share it with somebody, dude. It's, uh, it's much appreciated. It means the world to me, and I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for everything you guys do. Mm-hmm. 